So I'm back here in East London on a cold Friday night where I've made my way to an event on Kanyaza and female pleasure. It's being run by someone called Habib Akande. He's 33, he's from London and describes himself as a sex educator. He thinks Kanyaza could help close the gender pleasure gap and he's actually published a book on it. Today um, I'm really looking forward and really pleased that we've got a sold out um, workshop, a Kunyaza workshop. Sold out? Yeah, sold out. Why yeah. are people so keen to learn about k- or female sexual pleasure? I think because the uh, Kunyaza has got a reputation of, for squirting, people want to know does it really work, is it really effective, is there really a culture in Africa that embraces female sexuality? Some people are interested in, okay, how, how can we close a pleasure gap? How can we get more men involved in speaking about sex and sexual pleasure? Everyone that comes to the event has got a handout um, and on it I can see a quiz about female <laughs> sexual pleasure. So I just wanted to ask you some of these answers. Um, how many nerve endings does the average clitoris have? Now, I've read this so many times. Um, I want to say 32,000. That's the top end. There's 8,000, 4,000 or 1,000. I'm going to go 32. 8,000. 8,000? Oh, yeah, double the amount of um, nerve endings in the penis. So the, penis is, the average penis has 4,000 nerve endings and the average clitoris has 8,000 nerve endings. Oh, wow. So this is why it's important to... Again, it's about education, but doing it in a way where people feel empowered and not made to feel like, how can you not know that? Well, I don't think I knew any of that, actually. I had no, I had idea. no idea that the clitoris has 8,000 nerve endings. But so what can I do with that knowledge? Well, I guess you can have orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure the knowledge of 8,000 nerve endings <laughs> is going to help me. Um, but anyway, uh, he's clearly well read. Yeah, he's done his research. He's passionate yeah. about the positive contributions of Africa mm. uh, when it comes to sexuality. So he's well read on this, <laughs> clearly. And also, one thing, so I was at the event as well. One thing that I found um, quite surprising was the demographic of yeah. people there. So it was really busy, but there was a mix of ages. There was a mix of ethnicity. So there was clearly quite an appetite for this. Why did you come today to the event? From... You know, the early days of when I became sexual, you seem to think you know it all. Especially when you just listen to friends' conversations and the local content and music and such. For me, growing up, I sort of had to unlearn all of those things and start fresh. And and you start fresh by asking questions. Um, What do you like? What are your boundaries? What kind of things did you learn? Mostly the history and how it's not really known in the Western world. So I was kind of interested just to see an event where they spoke about sex and sex practices from like a different culture. Um, growing up in the UK, I'm very much aware that sex is taught and practiced in completely different ways across the world. Habib is a black Muslim man, and growing up in like um, you know a religious household, like it, we've never really spoke about sex. So. I just came to just hear a Muslim man's perspective on female pleasure. So when we were there, people were really interested in the cultural side of it, weren't they? As well as the details of how to perform kanyaza. Definitely. And it was really interesting to talk to other young women about their personal experiences too. So for a long time, it's like with sex, it's always been focused on pleasing as opposed to being pleased but so for a long time I haven't really focused on my ple- my own pleasure up until relatively recently and as soon as I started doing that and just learning more about my um, anatomy what I like what I don't like um, it's been really empowering how has it changed things for you I get to orgasm 